Welcome back to Teletoons. Tonight we got something a little special for you. In a strange twist of events, we're going to have Rick from Engines of Aggression opening, uh, actually interviewing the band that he's opening up for tonight, Curve. It's Tony and Dean. Take it away, Rick. Okay. Do I need your mic there? Okay. Yeah, I'm here with Curve. Uh, they have a really interesting sound. It reminds me of kind of like My Bloody Valentine, Ministry, Kate Bush, and a interesting hybrid. Um, I wanted to ask you, I heard that you, uh, uh, Dave Stewart, had something to do with at that early part of mm -hmm. your career or something. How did that come about? I'm a big fan of the Eurythmics. Mm -hmm. No, we're big fans of the Eurythmics as well. But, um, early Eurythmics. Yeah, yeah, early Eurythmics. Yeah. <laughs> Everything before Revenge. No, <laughs> Savage was good after. Savage was but, um, well, I don't know. I mean, I met Dave when I was 15 years old in Sunderland, because that's mm -hmm. where he comes from as well. Mm -hmm. So we met in Mill Burns Caff, and he persuaded me to leave home and go to London and seek my fortune. Mm -hmm. And um, that was about it. And then he was just a mate from there on. Yeah. And much later, he then met Dean. And um, Dean auditioned um, to be in his band at the time, which was Eurythmics. And um, got the job and went off on a couple of world tours with the guy. And, um, That's cool. And he's just always been there in our lives. He's one of, he, I mean, he's the longest relationship I've had with any man. Yeah. You know, like long term, like seen right from the beginning. I was 15, it was like 20, it's 13 years. Wow. You know, he's, and, um, he's very, he's really um, inspiring though. He can be mm -hmm. really brilliant. You know, you can speak to him about lots of things. If you're feeling really under about something, you can't work out yeah. why. He'll go through. You can talk to him, and he'll go through a series of things. You know, that might mm -hmm. be troubling you, or say something really off the wall to make you laugh. You know, about what you're <laughs> feeling. It's that kind of. Um, he's a very clever man. Yeah, he actually he's lives. Maybe a friend. Yeah. yeah, he lives in. Uh, California now, about two blocks from my parents' house. Mm, <laughs> I see him getting the mail sometimes. I haven't seen him. So you, you hooked up with Flood a couple of album, uh, albums ago. He's, once again, an incredible producer engineer that I have a lot of respect for. How did that come about, and how has he added to your sound? Well, um, well I met Flood because he worked on my first solo album. Mm -hmm. So he um, and Alan Mulder. We met Alan Mulder before that because he worked on a, a project that Dean and I were doing together called State of Play, and he mixed that. And um, my relationship with Alan continued, and through Alan, his best friend is Flood. Hmm. Right? And then I met Flood, and it was all very on a social level, you know, he was just a mate. Yeah. And we went out to dinner yeah. and went to clubs and got really wrecked together and all yeah. this stuff. <laughs> and then when it came to do Curve Records, it was like, well, I think it'd be perfect. And I suggested it to Dean, and, and they met up, and they got on really, really well, and, um, and established quite a good bond you know, quite immediately, and that's obviously very important yeah. if you're going to make a record with someone. And um, that's how it was done. I mean, I met him through Alan, really. Mm -hmm. He really enjoys it, though, you know. I mean, he, yeah. I think he dreads a lot of the stuff that he does. Um, but he really enjoys working with us because it's very kind of, you know, we work from 12 till... Eight, eight or something, you know, and then he goes home, he can be at home, he can have a home life, you know, yeah. so things like that. So it's a, a real kind of, it's, it's an easy kind of you know, thing for him. Yeah. And he really enjoys it, and the input, you know, is of such. Well, your records sound really dense, they sound mm. great, I like the production. And well, he brings in, um, what he actually adds to the production is he brings in all these old, really fantastic old analogue synthesizers that mm. look like wardrobes, and they've got little pegs in them and stuff, <laughs> and he just moves uh. the pegs around, and he, um, it's funny, on this album I was quite surprised because we used two different producers, co-producers, Flood and Steve Osborne. You can't tell the difference between the tracks who's right. done what. So I think that the overall thing that comes off our productions is that Dean and I are the producers. Mm -hmm. And then we bring Flood or some compatible person who we usually have had a long relationship with and we trust them immensely, will come in and just pull it over the finishing line. Come in so and tell the, the truth, yeah. Yeah, but the majority of the production work is done before anyone comes. It's just good to have that objective ear to come in and listen. Yeah, somebody like that person. as well. Yeah. Somebody you can really respect, you know. Sure. Um, I want to add, talk to you about the new record. S what is Super Blaster about? It's a really interesting title for a song, mm. and I have my ideas what I think it's about, and I was wondering if you could tell me what it is. Mm, well, um, I, I don't really know what it's about. <laughs> I hate talking about what songs are about, mm -hmm. because um, it just takes away... Leave it to the imagination. Yeah, it takes then. away the listener's input. But I can tell you one thing about it. I did it... Off the top of my head, at 10 o'clock in the morning, I just got out of bed and I just went straight downstairs in the basement. I hadn't brushed my teeth or washed my face and I just went straight down there and this thing came out of my mouth. <laughs> How do you write the songs? Do you usually just, uh, do you play instruments or do you sing them into a tape? Like our singer sings things into a tape recorder and then he comes in with these ideas and we Yeah, I build sing from things there. into a tape recorder. Yeah. But um, it's not how we write the songs. Um, the songs are written in like many 
you know, we haven't got a formula. Mm. There's no formula to the way that we write at all. So. That super blaster was done about, took about 10 minutes. I was at home at the report studio, had this idea, played it to Tony. Tony went on holiday mm -hmm. and I decided to embellish it and make sure that she liked it because I knew that it was something good. So, and I just went to the studio and just put it down roughly how it was off the port studio, added a few more things, you know, and things. And so um, it was done very, very quickly. Yeah, I and then like Alan it came I, back and worked on the guitar, the guitar yeah. straight away, vocals straight away. It was really simple. It was done. And it's like very simple parts, but they work so well together. It's yeah. very memorable. Yeah. I, th I find that a lot of the best writing is the stuff that just comes right away. I, I can sit in a room and write for hours and try to think of something. It exactly. never comes. And then you go, you know, have a few drinks, you come back and you just all of a sudden it hits you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. it's nice. you, it's come, you come at it from a different space, though, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't know where it is, but you, all of a sudden you, you do something yeah. and you like it, and it, you know. Yeah. It's funny because um, a couple of nights I've had a real problem remembering the lyrics in Super Blaster. And they're so <laughs> easy. They're the yeah. simplest lyric I've ever written. Hmm. You know, and I, I get a real like, block about it. I will reach out for what? All right. <laughs> you mentioned a second ago about uh, how telling, explain the lyrics, you, you like the listener to do that. How do you feel about videos in that respect? Do you think it explains too much? No, uh, ours. <laughs> yeah. Well, your video's interesting. If you've seen the video, it's got, it's really, there's a white room with foam, and it's just, mm. it's like almost a surreal candy shop or something. It's mm. really strange. It's just children mm. going mad, and that's yeah. all we are, really. And across <laughs> the board, you know, I mean, with the director and everybody, you know, mm -hmm. the whole crew of the day. Nuts. And just nuts, yeah, just a yeah. bunch of children, loads of foam bits yeah. everywhere. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So you don't think videos d distract from the imagination? But not when you see, have you seen the Nirvana video? Uh, yeah, Street that's Fox? pretty pretty incredible, well, I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> it makes you jealous. Yes, that's true. You know, I mean, I defy one band to look at that mm -hmm. and that's not true. think. I wish that was me. I guess the Brano videos you see just, just tend to lock your... your and it's not literal, that's what I'm saying. I, yeah. no, I, that's why I don't really like things that are literal. I don't like when we do videos, I never say, well, the lyric says, I've dropped a cup, so I want to see a cup drop. Yeah, I can't imagine you know? anything worse than that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, there really are yeah. just a handful of videos that you like. Sure. And the bulk of them, 90% of them more, are just, you know, out of crap. I'd have to agree with you on the Nirvana. Another yeah. one I really like is the Bjork video. I don't know if it's the same director, yeah. but that's it's not the same incredible. Way. Wow. <laughs> okay. I, I was going to ask you about your voice. I mean, it kind of reminds me of a maybe lower, more sensual Kate Bush. And I was wondering if she was ever an influence on oh, you. Oh, yeah, definitely. I love Kate Bush. Yeah. Absolutely. Leah Dorr, the woman. Yeah. They it always have, right from the beginning. I always yeah. thought she was totally crazy. Yeah. And um, I liked the way she worked, the fact that she just kept it all within her own family and all her own friends. And she had her own studio. And she produces her own records. And she just doesn't take any shit from anyone. Yeah. And, they sound and she just locks herself away. And that's good enough for her. And then it, she releases this record. And it's good enough for a million people as well. Sure. <laughs> So, a lot yeah, of it I sounds pretty timeless, too. Yeah. You can't I don't really think she in. makes records at age yeah. at all. Yeah, that's hard to do. Um, mm. Your sound is interesting, too. We share a common thing in our sound is we use drum machines in, as well and things. And mm. uh, I was wondering um, how, how that came about. Was that a conscious thing from the beginning to, to use drum machines and keyboards and things in the mm. live sound? Or, we were just trying to recreate what you It was a necessity. Yeah. It was just necessity. It had to be done because we couldn't get it. We tried, you know, to mm -hmm. keep it quite organic, I think, at the beginning. And, and it, it just wasn't working. There was just too yeah. many complicated things going on and mm. just too many missing bits. And we didn't want to end up having, like, five backing vocalists, two keyboard players, and just have, like, a multitude of people on the stage. Yeah. And so we thought, oh, we're going to get around this. Oh, we'll just get an echo and a sequence. <laughs> yeah, it works. It, it really does. I, our, the way we went about it is we were more of a rock band. We said, how can we make this more interesting? So mm. it was a conscious decision to... Uh, to augment the technology. Yeah, but um, we believe in that, that there's no future without technology anyway, and um, yeah. people who ignore it are just losers sure. in the end. Because, Definitely. you know, stadium rock, you know, it, I suppose if, you know, you're an American band, your pinnacle must be to become enormous so you can go into stadiums and mm -hmm. do this thing. And, um, you know, and you're going to have bands like Chasing Your Ass doing it with all this technology <laughs> and real musicians. Yeah. And you pit that against the band that aren't using it. Yeah, I agree. I think audiences are ready for it, as long as you're not going overboard with mm. like every vocal on tape or something. Yeah, yeah we no. don't do that. Yeah, no, no not at all. It's I'm completely not yeah. like that, not identical. We don't really, not interested in repeating it exactly sure. the same. Sure. Okay, what else was I going to ask you? 
Well, I just some basic things. How is the tour? You've, you've been to America a few times. You opened for, I think, Jesus and the Mary Chain when you were back yeah, there. Yeah, that was good. Cool. Yeah. And how do you like doing your own tour? Is it going for you? They've been, by the way, we're on tour with them, and they've been incredible and gracious hosts, so we're <laughs> very thankful for that. It's the only way you can be with anybody that's with you. There's a whole team that goes out, and you can only be supportive of what's going on. Mm. Otherwise, it's just really crap, you know? Mm. You're looking forward to L.A.? Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. LA will be good. I'm looking more forward to San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. that should be fun. I'm looking That's really looking forward to New York. Mm -hmm. yeah. Shopping. I was talking to her. Where, <laughs> where tell me where to get some good clothes. Yeah. Good clothes in New York. Yeah, Christopher and Spring. Well, I'm yeah. about out of questions, so I guess that's it for Teletoons, and we're here with Curve, and I guess we'll see you next time.